Hello and welcome to Films and That. My name's Rob Turnbull. And my name's Sam Hall. Today, Sam, what are we looking at? Today we're looking at Underground by Emir Costa Rica. And what made you choose this one? Um, it's just so fun. Underground utilises the plot device of a love triangle to tell the story of the rise and fall of Yugoslavia. It's a tale of revolution, betrayal, war and friendship in the style of a farcical comedy. This review contains spoilers. I'm quite glad that you had to kind of sum it up in a pithy sentence there because mm. there's, there's a lot going on in this film basically, isn't there? It is because it's the history of an entire country, isn't it? Which is, I think, is probably like the point that they started at when they wrote it. Obviously, you can't do the, the history of an entire country in a film. So you do it via the medium of a, a character or two and just sort of, you know, pointing out little events here and there. Why choose such a miserable subject and do a comedy about it. Maybe that's the idea, you know. I mean, I, nobody wants to see Holocaust the comedy or whatever, so. <laughs> um, but there's a, there's a lot of love for Yugoslavia in this film, isn't there? Oh yeah, it's, it's, um, it, it's, it's patriotic and it's satirical at the same time. <laughs> this story starts at the beginning of World War II literally the invasion of Belgrade mm. and we're introduced to two wonderfully insane characters who um, I, I did wonder if they'd watched any Bottom or R Rick Mail and Aid Edmondson I, I was, <laughs> before they wrote I was this. thinking Young Ones when I watched this. Yeah. yeah. Blackie, the, who's essentially one of the lead characters, uh, he's an electrician and he bites into a wire and his hair sort of goes on end, you know, and you're like, OK, so this is what this film's about then. <laughs> yeah. The opening scene is them in a kind of horse and cart and they're like drunk, they're shooting guns in the air and they're being chased by like a brass band doing like a little who, poke. Who are throughout the film, aren't they? Yeah. The brass band, yeah. It, it is, it's cartoonish, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. What a way to kind of come home from a night out. That's why, <laughs> yeah. that's, why I, that's how I come home. <laughs> But yeah, these two characters, Blackie and Marco, we should mm -hmm. say. Um, yeah, so they're gangsters, basically. They're communists. They start, they start as gangsters who join the Communist Party, immediately become involved in the underground to fight against the Nazis. The whole story that goes across decades centres around a love triangle between the two characters who are best friends and both in love with the same woman, an actress called Natalia. She's very fickle. She goes from being... She starts off, she's in love with a Nazi, <laughs> literally. And then when they kill the Nazi, she's just sort of... She's not, she's not that distraught about it. Yeah, and then, then she, she, loves, <laughs> she loves Blackie. She and immediately she jumps Blackie. on... Yeah, and she loves... And they're both sort of deplorable people, aren't they? They're both violent. Uh, Marco in particular is, is... In a way, he's almost the main villain as well as being the main character. Well, Blackie's more the muscle and Mar Marco's more in charge of things, isn't he? So yeah. he's, he's a bit cleverer about things um, and a bit more slimy, I guess. Whereas mm -hmm. Blackie's more patriotic and does he's always talking about fighting for his country, doesn't he? Yeah. That's his, that's his only concern, is fighting for his country. They're both, but they're both alpha males, though. They're both very strong. Uh, Marco is continuously smashing bottles over his head <laughs> with no blood. He just, he doesn't even, there's no explanation for it half the time. He's just yeah. like, I don't want you to drink that. He smashes <laughs> it on his head. Nothing really has any kind of consequence, does it? No. There's uh, really horrific things that happen with a great amount of levity, like uh, Marco's brother hangs himself at one point. Oh, God. <laughs> in any other film, that would have been treated in a completely different way. Yeah. And then after the war, we move on to what is, I suppose, the central plot, the connection to the, the title of the film, Underground. Marco has this, un beneath his house, he's got an underground bunker, and it's a huge bunker. And he's kind of built a, a weapons factory into it. Yeah, because they are arms dealers during the war, yeah. aren't they? That's how yeah. they get their money, yeah. And then 
he convinces Blackie and a whole host of other people, and then he convinces them to stay down there and continuously make weapons. And he'll the idea is that eventually, when it's safe to come up again, he'll tell them, say, right, we'll come and we'll take back Belgrade from the Nazis. And then the war ends, and he doesn't tell them yeah. because he wants to make money off of the weapons. So... Mark and and he marries Natalia. She's in on it as well. She, who's in on it? Yeah, I don't know why she would. Yeah, um, and Blackie all the way throughout that thinks that she's still in love with him and wants to marry him. So he's yeah. So he's essentially only out for himself and is totally betraying all the people he loves, including his own brother. Hmm. And his brother's pet monkey, mm. who um, takes control of a tank later <laughs> on, which is uh, yeah, which, which is, is a, an idea of the kind of film this is. This is a ma- that's a major plot point yeah. actually when he takes control of the tank. <laughs> no! The art direction is tremendous. Mm. You know the details in the the underground bunker that they have to live in for twenty years. Oh, well, they've got loads of different machinery, haven't they, to mm. kind of generate electricity and there's a guy pumping water like yeah this, people so riding showers. motorcycles uh, motorcycles or bicycles to generate energy there's one scene isn't it during a, a wedding scene when they <laughs> make, yeah. make the the bride look like she's floating and they kind of have a machine that does that with with wires presumably coming off it and there's yeah. odd little it's like a fantasy world is, is that they're living in they created their own community out of the little that they have but that's it isn't it they're kind mm. of disillusioned and they're kind of in this whole dream world, mm. every character is, and I think that is that's the message, isn't it? Blackie, at this point, he's actually considered to be a national hero who everybody thinks has died, and he escapes and stumbles across a film set where they're recreating the story of him liberating, you know, fighting the Nazis and dying. So of course he comes out and he thinks. All these Nazis are still there. Yeah, <laughs> one... he sees a load of people, a load of Nazis. people dressed as Nazis, and thinks they're real Nazis. So he starts shooting them and throwing grenades at them and killing all these actors. <laughs> and then we fast forward to the final segment of the film, which is during the Yugoslav Wars of the nineties. That's the most depressing part, because the film's split up into three chunks, isn't it? Mm. The first one's called War, the second one's called Cold War, and the third one's called War. <laughs> yeah. That's a real kind of comment on the history of Yugoslavia, I guess. By this point, has Blackie forgiven Marco for locking him in <laughs> the underground? For... I don't think he knows, though. I think he never really realises that that's what's happened. He Do you think keeps... he's just gone... He's so crazy by that point. Mm. He's just gone completely into fighting these fascists and... Mm. He just, want, he just wants to fight anyone he can, mm. basically. So all of these actions are, are more symbolic of things that happened in Yugoslavia rather than actual narrative points, aren't they? So, yeah. so the characters, they're more representative of, of Serbs, basically. Serbs, so culture. Blackie is... He's the, a pole he's, man. He's the working class... Banderas. But, yeah, he's, he's a blue-collar worker. Mm. He's a fighter. He's a soldier. He's a patriot. But he's also being controlled by Marco, the elite, you know, so that's representative. Natalia, what would you say, how does she comes into the whole... She's kind of, she's naive and she's fickle, so I, I kind of felt it was these people that are just going along with whatever power is controlling them at that particular point. So she's in love with a Nazi when the Nazis are in power, and then she's in love with Blackie when he's powerful. So she's just kind of going with whoever is best for her at that particular point and not having any political agenda per se i would have said yeah that's true yeah so she, she's the the flip-flopping she's like she's like the um i guess the middle voters maybe mm. i suppose the, the ones who just um sort of go whatever whatever benefits them at the yeah. time yeah, yeah. there is a constant energy towards it mm. that was that was the big thing the director um wanted i think mm-hmm. he didn't care about the narrative he didn't really care about the character development he wanted the energy if i speak about this film i would rather speak about the energy and the certain references in the uh, history of cinema because we are in the end of the century rather than strong more or less stronger story 
He wanted the constant brass band playing poker. I, I feel like the energy is heightened by the the songs that keep on coming back as well. Mm. I, I feel like that consistency, I mean, like that kind of keeps you going with the flow. Mm. Um, instead of if they had kept on having lots of different songs. There was one weird song, though, in the middle of the film. <laughs> which I assume is meant to be some sort of uh, Yugoslav pop, pop song. Pop song. Is that when they like dancing? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I and really like that song. <laughs> it's a weird it's song. It's so though. weird. Because <laughs> it sounds nothing like anything else of the era, you know, that you'd expect in the West. I'm not even sure the brass band plays any other song, actually. <laughs> so, they do, do they even play more than one song? I can't even they, tell. They, they play a few, yeah. Do yeah. they? Okay. Like the, the, <laughs> the song at the beginning and the mm. song at the end are the same, mm. but then they play different ones throughout. Oh, okay. I did like the image um, in the third chunk of the film where there's all these like highways underground going from different countries. Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry. That's a, that's a pretty big point about this film again another um link to the the term underground i don't Literal know if there ever yeah. was an underground motorway obviously we have underground railways but in this there's an underground motorway which is uh, i think i assume is meant to be like a, a means of getting across borders mm. without getting checks if you talk to people from eastern europe and that they talk about oh god going across the border it's like you know, you've got to you've got to come with a big wad of money you know <laughs> um so that is a thing, you know, and it's, it's people, immigration, I think, is, is what that's trying to reference, isn't it? Because mm. that, is that was a theme of Yugoslavia that, and, and the Yugoslav wars. It is kind of bittersweet, isn't it? Because you've, yeah. got, you've got real horrific moments. That's right towards the end, there's a great image of when uh, Marco and Natalia, are, they've been killed and they've been burnt. And someone sets fire to the, the wheelchair and it's just going around this like, kind of circle. This electric wheelchair, yeah. And Blackie's just kind of going, oh, you know, Marco. And he's like, he's like he doesn't really seem to accept that he's been burnt. <laughs> I don't know. And he's like, oh, I've found, have you seen my son? Have you, found, you know, he's like trying to talk to them like mm. they're still alive and that, that he's kind of forgiven them. It's really tragic. Even though he ordered their deaths um, like indirectly. <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> moments before. Yeah. Yeah. That is their culture and that is the message the film kind of takes home is that there's just this constant conflict between people around you and internally it's all this going on but then it's still a, quite a, a loving film to Yugoslavia. I know the, the director thinks of himself as Yugoslav and he said he'll die Yugoslav. In my family every time in, in every generation, they were changing countries. And I'm fed up with it. So I was Yugoslav, and I'm going to die as a Yugoslav. It won the Palme d'Or, didn't it? Mm -hmm. In Cannes. So yeah, this is this incredible um, attention to detail film, incredibly smart, lots to like about it. Mm. So what do you think about it? Well, I think, I think I've already said over the over again that I really enjoy it. But it could, it could just be this simple that, you know, I'm a big... Rick Mail, Aid Edmondson fan, so anything with lots of cartoon slapstick violence always um, <laughs> is, is something that I really enjoy. I also find the history of Yugoslavia quite interesting. Uh, personally, I, I enjoyed it, I found it a bit too long. The I've only watched it t twice, mm -hmm. but both times there were moments when I just was when it really dragged. The first time was when they're on that kind of boat mm. and having that wedding, and I was just like, oh. It's the, yeah, it's, it's the scenes when they get really, 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 really drunk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Isn't it? <laughs> they just go on forever, and I'm just yeah. like, where's this going? Come on, move on. <laughs> the first time I watched it, I was more engaged with the characters and what they were doing, because mm. uh, I did care about what the monkey was, if the monkey was going to get saved, and if <laughs> if Jovan was gonna was gonna drown and stuff like mm. that. Um, but the second time, I was more I was more into the kind of comedy aspects and the kind of political stuff. 
I find that more entertaining the second time. So there's, there is a lot of layers to this film, I think. Mm -hmm. It's very, very well made. All right, that's it for this time on Films and That. Thanks for watching and subscribing. We'll see you next time. Ciao.